I want you to talk to one or two people that you know. This covers everybody. Is either you're already married or you are planning to get married. And so if we understand God's plan concerning marriage, then life will not be so difficult and your marriage will not become so burdensome. Amen? And so the first question I asked this morning in part one of getting married and staying married is, what is marriage? What is marriage? Everybody wants to get married. When people come to me for marriage counseling, I ask them, I said, what is marriage? Because it is at the marriage counseling session that you can get things right. What does the Bible say about the foundation? It says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Many of us get married because of the look, which is good. I said this morning that the eye is the light, is the entrance of light into the body. So if you can't see me, how will you know me? Except you are blind. But if you have eyes, the first thing that makes you attracted to somebody is what you see with your eyes. But that's not enough. You can be attracted to a fruit and the fruit may be sour. Would that mean you will eat that fruit because you are attracted to it? Amen? So what is marriage? There are two types of marriages that we are going to use for this exposition that we are going to do for the next four weeks. Number one is the worldly marriage. The worldly marriage. What is the worldly marriage? It is a union of one or multiple people together. The sex, the gender, the numbers vary due to culture and the evolution of various states. The definition is fluid and is subject to change. It is sanctioned by the state and can be dissolved by the state. This is my own definition. Nobody gave me. It is based on whatever goes. Anything goes. So in, Af in Africa, one man in those days could marry five women. And the more wives he has, the more he can boast. He shows that he's wealthy. He shows that he can handle women. So that is his own definition. I read somewhere in a part of East Africa and in some parts of Asia that a woman can marry multiple husbands. Aha. Uh -huh. You see everybody saying, hmm? If a man can marry many, what's wrong with a woman marrying many? You say, hmm? What is hmm? It's only the men that say, hmm? So if you marry multiple wives, that's called what? Polygamy. If you marry multiple husbands, it's called polyandry. You are just marrying them. In fact, I saw one in India. I saw the video. The woman is married to two brothers. And everybody in their village, if you are married, you have to marry all the boys in the family. So you say her. That's the way they do it. That's why I say it's a marriage called anything goes. The same way you are saying her. In America, in Sweden, in Europe, all over the world now, even in Africa, men now marry men. That is men marrying men is gay, right? So now women also say, why should men be the only ones having the fun? So women marry women. What is that? Lesbianism. Then we took it a, further, a step further. Some men say, when I was born, inside my spirit, I feel I'm a woman. So the man changed himself to a woman. And the woman also say, inside my spirit, I feel like I'm a man. Some men, women change. So that transgendered man, woman that's now a man, and the transgendered woman, the woman, man that's now a woman, they can now marry again. That's trans marriage. Abby? And then, the transgender woman that is now a man may say, no, although I'm a man, I am still a gay man. <clears throat> so that former woman who is now a man can marry a man. Are you getting the drift now? The worldly marriage is the marriage of anything goes. The way you like it is the way you do it. And the state can sanction it. So the worldly marriage can be sanctioned by your culture or your state. So let's go to the second type of marriage. It's called the godly marriage. My definition of the godly marriage is, is a divine union 
of the spirit of God in a man and the divine union with the spirit of God in a woman. Do you follow what I'm saying? It's, when God was speaking to me early this morning and I was writing it down, I said, wow, this is what it is. It's not the marriage of a man to a woman. Divine marriage is a covenant between the spirit of God in a man and the spirit of God in a woman. Hallelujah. If you are going to look at it the way it's, it, we do, that's why we have divorce. It's the spirit. It's something inside you. What is the spirit of God? When God creates you, he breathes life into you. That life is the spirit of God. And when that life leaves you, this taint, as Paul calls it, is dead. You can take that taint and throw it in the garbage and let pigs eat it. It doesn't matter. You can bury it in a hundred million dollar coffin. It doesn't matter. Because what is useful to this flesh that we love is actually the spirit that is inside. And as long as that spirit is there, there is hope. But once that spirit departs, it's over. And that's why when Jesus came, he said, I'm no longer interested in the circumcision of the flesh because this flesh is dust. Are you following me? And that dust will go back to the, the earth. That's why when people die, they say, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. If I'm alive, I'm all right. But if somebody dies and you leave him in that room, give them 24 hours. They will begin to swell and they begin to smell and they begin to decompose. If there's no earth there, it will decompose to earth by itself. Because the only thing that is useful in that thing is the spirit. Amen? So you need to understand this. I, I want to, because today we are only treating what is marriage. Amen? What is marriage? But you have to first understand who you are. You are a spirit that is in a body. And we spend all our time on that body instead of in the spirit. So that is why what you do is you must feed the spirit with the word of God. And once your spirit begins to understand and hear the word of God, your spirit now becomes godly. And if your spirit continues to receive the word of the devil, kill, steal, destroy, sex, immorality, fornication, adultery, then that becomes the spirit of the devil. And the devil cannot go into where God is. The devil only goes in when you let God out. That is why the Bible says in Revelation 3.20 that Jesus is at the door of your heart. Anytime you see heart in the Bible, it's your spirit. It's not your organ. Because if it was your organ, they do heart transplant. Am I right? So they can remove my heart, give somebody else that heart. Does that make that person me? The spirit is just that the, the language that will make us understand like when you say I love you and you draw heart. Is it your heart that loves? Your heart is just a machine that pumps blood. That's all it does. Am I right doctor? That's all it does. It's not any emotion, love. It's not even in the heart. It's here. If there are certain things, don't let me go medical because you will correct me. So let me just leave. Let's leave um, the matter to Matthias as they say. Amen? Your spirit must be cultivated as the spirit of God. Then your spouse, the spirit, must be cultivated as the spirit of God. So some of you are saying, Pastor, I'm already married to the devil. I'm sorry. All you can do is pray. How do you know that person is there? What about you? You may be the one bringing out the devil in that person. The Bible has a solution to it. It says, the unbelieving spouse is sanctified by the believing spouse. So that means if you are already married, begin to pray for your spouse. Amen? Some say, but pastor, I'm already divorced. It has happened. 
by the grace of God, if reconciliation can happen, be praying for it. If the situation has gone beyond where you can bring about reconciliation, they've gone to marry somebody else, they've moved out of whatever, then just be praying for God, to God. Because I know there was a woman that Jesus met by the well. And that woman had several husbands before. Jesus did not say, go to hellfire. He hates divorce. But it is the sin of divorce that he hates. If it has happened and restitution is not possible, God may still have grace and mercy upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. So every area that you want to use to say this message is not for you, it is still for you. Maybe the challenges in your marriage is for you to be a blessing to your children. Not to make the mistake that you made. This is why marriage must not be entered into lightly. Many people focus on the wedding. I tell you this all the time. Every time I've spoken to people about wedding or marriages, they keep talking about the wedding. Especially people in our culture because they are worried about the ashwebi. They are worried about the, the uniform, the clothes that all of them have to wear this time they spend on this Ashoke, on the Gele, on the Alagai Duro, sorry if you don't understand what I'm saying, Alagai Joko, the introducing this, the drinks, the venue, it's a lot and it's beautiful. Because when you come to my daughter's wedding, you don't say, I thought pastor said they spend time on it. Yes, we will do it by the grace of God. Amen? There's nothing wrong in it. But that's not the most important thing. Nobody wants to get married at the bus stop. If God has given you the grace and you can afford it, you do what you want to do. Amen? But one thing I can tell you is that at my daughter's wedding, if Jesus tarries, there will be no alcohol. Whether you like it or not. The things that I will control, I will, or you will not see me. And you will see me because there will be no alcohol. By the grace of God. Amen? And there will be certain things that will not have. Those things we can control. Amen? But they will have gele. If you don't like gele, too bad for you. And there will be ashwebi. But that's not the focus. Do you follow what I'm saying? I don't want us to be confused. I'm taking my time because only what is marriage? It says here that the wedding is just a day or several days. Some people do wedding for three days, five days. Engagement, introduction, this, uh, bride price, all these things. But that's just the wedding. It's an event. The wedding is an event. The marriage is a lifetime. You need to understand the difference. The wedding is just an event. And God will make that event successful. People will say, wow, it was wonderful. Great. What about the day after? What about one year after? What about two years after? It is just an event. And that event is based on...